at the end of the last class I gave a problem, but before I go there, um, I think I should mention a few things that comes from the problem that we tackled before that. Uh, it is this problem x double dot plus x minus x cube is equal to 0, we have done that. That teaches us a few things, so let us let us uh, talk about that and then go to the next one. So, it is vector field as we have obtained, there was one equilibrium point here, another at plus 1, another at minus 1 and we had noted that for the e equilibrium point that was at the origin, its character was like a center, the eigenvalues were purely imaginary hmm? and so we had inferred that they would be circular orbits like so periodic orbits there. Here what was it? It was a <coughs> saddle, so it should have two outgoing eigenvectors and two incoming eigenvectors. Likewise, here we had the same thing, two outgoing, outgoing eigenvectors, two incoming. And then we said that these guys will bend around and will meet these so we said that here there would be orbits like this and so on and so forth it will be more or more distorted but nevertheless closed loops and here there would be orbits like this fine that is what we said it tells us a few more things. First, how did we infer that the orbit here would be closed loop? We had locally linearized it and obtained the eigenvalues and had seen found that the eigenvalues are perfectly imaginary. Okay. Now, the perfect imaginary eigenvalues, perfect imaginary eigenvalues would be in the complex plane. somewhere like this, right, in the complex plane. Now, you would very easily notice that if you give a slight perturbation to these eigenvalues, they will either go this way or that way. Okay. So, the purely imaginary eigenvalue is a marginal case between two possibilities, either it goes this way or it goes this way. If it goes this way, it would be incoming spiral orbit, if it goes that way it will be outgoing spiraling orbit. So, notice in addition that our the, the <coughs> basis of our argument that whatever we are talking about is valid only in a small neighborhood of the equilibrium point, naturally that question will be true, how small, how small a neighborhood and if you extend the logic you will realize that that smallness is arbitrary smallness. So, only as you look at it at a arbitrarily small neighborhood, its character would be perfect circles, else it might not be, right. Because after all you are non, you, you had a non-linear system, you are locally linearizing it, if you go far it will be, it will assume the character of sort of perturbing the eigenvalues, so it will either go this way or go that way, which makes you conclude that the, the conclusion that here the orbits should be uh, circular or periodic orbits that is questionable, right. Why was it questionable? It was questionable because our eigenvalues were at very, very special positions. If it is here, if it is to the left side, just part a bit a bit, not much change happens. If it is in the right hand side, it is unstable and part a bit a bit of course, overall the behavior remains more or less the same, but if it is on the, the imaginary axis that is not true, part of it either it goes, it becomes one type or becomes another type, there is a very large difference that happens. Hmm. That is why the systems where the eigenvalues are on those very, very special locations are given a separate name 
because we need to be careful about them. Hmm? They are called non hyperbolic orbits. Hyperbolic systems are where the eigenvalues are not on the imaginary axis. The ones where you have the eigenvalues exactly on the imaginary axis, the, the idea would say that be careful what you are arriving at by the local linearization may not really be true. Right. So, how do you check whether it is really true? You simply start from somewhere here, can you can you see on the on uh, here and then use the original equation and you can evolve it using the fourth order runge kutta method or whatever you have learned in the numeric analysis classes. If it really comes back to the same position, you know that okay, still here the local linearization is valid, else it is not. For example, this, this particular system, you can go back and run it on MATLAB, you will find that it becomes a in, incoming spiral orbit. Okay. So, locally that would infer that the, the local linearization is valid for that system in the infinitesimally small region. Our conclusion then, our conclusion obtained from the linearization linear system theory is then questionable. Clear? Okay, uh, his his uh, question is that in order to to extend the ranges initially we obtained in these three ranges and then we extended it with the equivalence with magnetic lines of force. How do you know really the magnetic lines of force analogy is valid? What is the logic behind it? The logic behind it is sim similar to uh, well if you look at it you have the equations of this form x dot is equal to f 1 of x y and y dot is equal to f 2 of x y. The moment these are given obviously, at every point there can be a unique vector. Okay. In that sense at every point there is a unique direction of the magnetic lines of force. So, in that sense you have got a similarity and why did I bring it? I could have introduced ab initio from here. But then we have some kind of a concept brought from our school days about the character of the magnetic lines of force. If we if we see the similarity, it becomes easier for us to to, to understand that. That's why. No, 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 no. You cannot infer the clockwise or anticlockwise direction from there because the result of a imaginary eigenvalue or a complex conjugate eigenvalue could result from both clockwise rotation as well as anticlockwise rotation. You cannot simply look at the eigenvalues and say it is clockwise or anticlockwise. You really have to look at the vector field. Huh? And the way to look at the vector field is place your pen, pen here at this point and calculate the actual vector direction. Hmm? If it is this way, then you know that it is clockwise rotation vector field. Wait. Uh, his question is that supposing somewhere it is a spiral, so, so somewhere it is a circle, and then somewhere it is a spiral. So at some time they have, they have to intersect. No, they cannot. They cannot. They cannot because the moment they intersect transversally, the moment they intersect transversally, at a point it would result in two vectors. Oh, that cannot happen because the vector at every point is given. That immediately gives you the concept that the scenario that you are talking about cannot happen. If there is a circular orbit, if there is spiraling orbit, the spiraling orbit will asymptotically home onto the uh, circular orbit, nothing else can happen really. Okay. Yes, the moment you understand these concepts, many things fall in place, I mean this is all that can happen, you cannot have anything else. There is another idea that is, you see the, the line here what does what character does it have? Okay, let us start from the idea. What is the definition of an eigen vector? 
the definition of the eigen vector is that if you have a point on the eigen vector then it will always remain on the eigen vector okay in a, in a linear space in a, in a linear say if this is the state space a linear state space given by a linear set of equations then you have the axis here and you have got eigen vector here what does it mean it means that if you take a initial condition here throughout its evolution it will always always remain there that is the concept of the eigen vector really verbally said in mathematics books you may find more abstract concept but this is what i find visualizable and easily understandable it will always remain there now in a nonlinear system the same idea can be extended in the sense that notice that this is no longer a line this line actually bends why does it bend because the system is nonlinear had it been linear that that means these lines would be extended ad infinitum however since the the system is nonlinear these lines bend but nevertheless they they retain that character if an initial condition is on this line it will always remain on this line okay so they have in that sense a similarity with the question of uh, of, the, of the eigen vector now the eigen vectors locally can be stable eigen vector and unstable eigen vector this one for example is unstable eigen vector this one for example is a stable eigen vector so this line then has the character of an eigen vector but not really eigen vector hmm? such lines are called unstable manifold this line naturally will be called the stable manifold hmm? so this line this line is called the unstable manifold and this line would be called a stable manifold so let us now talk about a little more mathematically correct definitions the manifolds are subspaces it is a two dimensional space <coughs> a subspace would be one dimensional hmm? a subspace is one dimensional in which a specific property can be assigned now in this case what is the specific property that on that subspace the orbit on this subspace for example the orbits are converging that is a stable manifold on this subspace the orbits are diverging that is an unstable manifold yes i am coming to that but then in a nonlinear system it must so happen that the unstable manifold as it goes around it may become a stable manifold it has become the stable manifold here so start from an initial condition here what will happen exactly on this line it will go along that and it will converge onto this okay so a unstable manifold has become a stable manifold so there is some kind of a connection between this point and that point and the connection is established by an unstable manifold going around and becoming the stable manifold so that establishes the connection hmm it is called a heteroclinic connection so this would be called a heteroclinic connection why hetero hetero means more than one right and one is homo so it is easy to see that if there is a heteroclinic connection there is also the possibility of a homoclinic connection how it is not difficult to imagine that there can be vector fields of this type suppose this is the equilibrium point hmm? this is this is a circle equilibrium point for example and here let there be a saddle equilibrium point then it is possible to have it this way <coughs> right if that happens then it is a homoclinic connection the same equilibrium point is connected through both its unstable manifold and the stable manifold hmm? it goes around and connects it these are also possible and happens so this is a homoclinic connection
uh, in some books you will find another nomenclature for example you notice that this two homoclinic connections establish a sort of island within this island the behavior is stable outside the island the behavior is unstable right so it sort of separates out two different types of behavior that is why in some books you will find that these lines have also been called separate tricks but i prefer not to call it separate tricks because if you have if, if you are calling them unstable manifold and the stable manifold just call them i don't don't prefer having one name for the one thing and the same thing called by some other name that confuses people hmm. but for your convenience because you will be start studying from many books in some books the same thing has been called separate tricks but for our purpose we will be calling them stable manifold and the unstable manifold you understood what is stable and unstable manifolds essentially they, that is extension on the idea of eigen vectors remember another thing that if you can identify the unstable manifold and the stable manifolds then at the saddle fixed point the eigen vectors are tangent to the the okay let's separately draw suppose here is a saddle point and you can identify that this is a unstable manifold and say this is a stable manifold it is possible now see i am drawing unstable and stable manifolds as curved lines because normally that will happen in a nonlinear system but then you can also conclude that if you locally linearize then you can always obtain the unstable eigen vector and the stable eigen vector and they would be tangent so the unstable eigen vector is tangent to the unstable manifold at the equilibrium point the stable eigen vector is tangent this is the stable eigen vector this is unstable eigen vector the stable eigen vector is tangent to the stable manifold at the equilibrium point stable manifold is an unstable manifolds are normally curved lines in a nonlinear system all right so we have just extended the idea of eigen vectors we have extended the idea of eigen vectors how we extend the idea, idea of eigen values i'll come to a little later because that is a little more involved but at this stage we can understand what these are <coughs> fine digested okay now let us come to the problem that i gave in the last class what is the problem i gave it was x dot is equal to y and y dot is equal to mu 1 minus x square y minus x that is the problem i gave in the last class so what is the behavior of course the i the equilibrium point is only one and that is at 0 0 convinced if you locally linearize the equilibrium point you get the jacobian matrix as 0 1 minus twice xy minus 1 mu minus mu x square mu mu xy anyway uh, it will go to 0 so i don't bother so at 0 0 this will take the form 0 1 minus 1 now i say that okay now you obtain the eigen values and see what happens as mu changes what happens changes through 0 first you consider a negative value then you consider a zero value then you consider a positive value and uh, okay well, well, what will it be <coughs> lambda is in this case it will come to be <coughs> oh 
Oh, what about two? So, um, mm, mm, mm. it's clear that something happens at uh, when does the transition happen? Plus minus two. So, at that value of mu, there there is a there is a transition happening. Suppose I take the the value of mu as plus two. Hmm? Plus two means this fellow is positive, and here you have how much? This goes off. Okay. So you have got lambda is equal to one, a positive eigen. Hmm. Now, slowly start reducing mu, huh? at which point do the Eigen values become, at that point the two Eigen values are exactly the same. If you have it greater, then the Eigen values are different. Okay. So, greater than plus 2, they are different, at plus 2, they are the same and below plus 2, they become complex complex with with positive Eigen value and as you go on reducing it further at mu is equal to 0 it becomes exactly imaginary Eigen values and when it goes to, to negative it becomes negative Eigen value, negative real part. Now, imagine that you have a system in which this mu represents some kind of a parameter which can be continuously varied. Uh, is the idea of a parameter clear to you? What is the parameter in a system? Like a, a physical system will have the, the mass, the in case of the, the pendulum, the length of the string, length of the string, uh, air friction, things like that. These are all parameters and there can be parameters that are variable also. In an electrical circuit, you may have a input voltage that can be varied you may have a rheostat which is a variable resistance that can be a parameter. So, things are variable. Now, imagine this mu represents such a variable parameter and suppose you are varying mu from a negative value to a positive value. For a negative value, what is the behavior? Complex conjugate with a negative real part. Okay. So, it is a spiral thing. So, you expect a behavior like so you do not know where, whether it is clockwise or anticlockwise. I am just drawing one. Give, depending on the specific system, you will draw it correctly. At uh, uh, mu is 0, at mu 0, what happens? It becomes, should becomes perfect circle behavior, right? And at mu positive, it becomes outgoing spiral right so from here to it becomes outgoing spiral okay it becomes a outgoing spiral so this is mu less than 0 mu equal to 0 and mu greater than 0 Now, will this orbit go to infinity, outgoing spiral? There is no guarantee, because we derived our conclu conclusion based on the local linearization. So, locally yes, it will diverge all right, but nobody can say that it will go on increasing, because elsewhere as you go away from the equilibrium point, there is no guarantee that the local linearization is still valid. So, there the, the, spiral, the orbit can still become still remain incoming, is that point clear? There is no guarantee that it, it, it will go on diverging indefinitely. After some time, you may encounter still an incoming spiraling orbit. So, imagine that that is happening outside, you have a incoming spiraling orbit. What will happen then? In between, there must be, there must be some orbit that lies in between which is stable from both the sides. 
okay there must be such an orbit okay this is how stable oscillations are created anywhere in nature this is how stable oscillations are created anywhere in nature these are called limit cycles now at the outset let me show you the difference between this orbit this is a periodic orbit it goes on like it like the pendulum but the the difference with the pendulum there is a very important difference with the pendulum if you have a perfect pendulum without any air friction then also you have got a periodic orbit like this but what is the difference between the, the, this this orbit and that orbit if you part up the initial condition it will settle down into another orbit but not the same one while if you part a bit it will come back to this one in that sense this is a stable orbit okay that is why i said that whenever there is a stable oscillatory behavior anywhere in nature you know that it is created by a limit cycle some phenomenon like this and you can easily see that that is a nonlinear phenomenon you can ha cannot have a stable oscillatory behavior other than having a nonlinear system a linear system can never have a stable oscillatory behavior sir but in the limit cycle sir if you take part of it a bit more then it can also follow the uh, the spiral currently ah uh, um if you part of it more then it will spiral out and finally converge onto that if you spiral out if you, if you start from it will spiral in and converge onto that okay but that again did not guarantee that if you start from here it is still as you know spiral orbit i didn't guarantee that okay i can only say that there exists a neighborhood from which this will happen clear in a nonlinear system you cannot say sitting here studying here you cannot say that if i am there what will happen you cannot say that hmm. but at least we can say with confidence that if this fellow has become unstable and if i find that there is some kind of incoming orbit somewhere then in between there must exist a stable periodic orbit that's a limit cycle and when i say that wherever you see any oscillatory behavior stable oscillatory behavior that must be created by this kind of a phenomenon that's a very strong statement no there are many of you who are electronic engineers and all the time they have to jump up and down with uh, uh, oscillators huh have you realized that oscillator is behave like this without that you, you cannot really design an oscillator okay an, os an oscillator has to be a limit cycle you cannot help it so all oscillators that you heard of they are limit cycles any other oscillation you have you can can encounter hmm? regular periodic oscillation there are many that keeps you alive heartbeat for example hmm heartbeat is a regular periodic oscillation and has to be a limit cycle can't help it hmm try to imagine what would happen if it if the heartbeat were of this type heartbeat were something with a zero or, or imaginary eigen values huh then what would happen try to imagine i mean unleash the the imagination and tell what would happen if the heartbeat were by the way let me tell you that people measure eigen values of of people's heart <laughs> so it's not that i'm talking uh, uh, too mathematical it's possible to measure eigen values <laughs> of your heart now uh, suppose the heart were like this linear system with perfectly uh, imaginary eigen values non hyperbolic system what would happen suppose no no our heart is anyway going on oscillating you cannot say our heart will go on oscillating it is anyway oscillating that's why we are alive it is oscillator so what would happen if 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 you bust a, bust a cracker here then it then then it will it will be put up and it will be staying there all your life 
<laughs> you, you will be you will be locked with that orbit why because at 10 years of your age so you heard a cracker burst and, <laughs> and that <laughs> startled you obviously that cannot happen and that is why it has to come back to the normal rhythm and that happens because it is a limit cycle there is outgoing spiral behavior there is a incoming spiral behavior as well okay are you convinced that all i am not seeing that some all stable oscillatory behaviors in nature or in engineering are limit cycles Heart stops means it is a diff different issue. I can, I'll, I'll tell you how, why heart stops, huh? because that has been very widely studied, huh? but that will come a little later. Hmm. That will come a little later. But presently, I am talking about healthy heart, and healthy heart exists because there is a limit cycle. Hmm? Convince yourself. Yes. Then you will get the, the real impression, real message why nonlinearity is so important why the things that you study in your linear system theory cannot really get you far because most of the things that you see in nature or in engineering are oscillatory there is some kind of oscillation and in order to understand that if you want to have oscillation then it has to be in a cycle some of you fellows are power electronics background right can you raise your hands okay so if you see a few of you power electronic switching circuit Sometimes it is on, sometimes it is off, off, so it is going on oscillating. That behavior must be a limit cycle, can not help it. Okay. In control systems, have you come across anything like that? Huh? Think, think, think. If you can ever think of anything, of course you can, they must be limit cycles. That is why limit cycles are so very important. And stability of limit cycles are also so very important. Because in engineering, what we are concerned with, if I have to work with a limit cycle, I have to design an oscillator, I have to design some kind of an oscillatory system, then I must ensure that this fellow is stable, right. So, there has to be some way to ensure the stability of a system, but of course, the systems may lose stability and things may happen. And we will we'll learn how to understand the stability of limit cycles, those things, those things will be important part of our uh, this course. But now, if you have a, 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 a stable orbit like this, what will its time domain response be like? An orbit in the state space looks like a <coughs> its time domain response will be almost not really i am talking about just a closed loop i didn't talk about a circle okay had it been a circle it would be a sinusoid if it's not a cycle circle there's no reason to believe it will be a sinusoid nevertheless a periodic orbit something like so so your signal generators must have something like that in your in, in, inside it huh? your cell phones they they generate microwaves Microwaves are oscillatory, gener generated by an oscillator inside that oscillates at the microwave fre frequency. So, there must be a limit cycle sitting inside, and it is your job to ensure its stability and stuff like that. But then, can it be an orbit like this? Have you seen? Have you seen such an orbit in any experiment, in theory, anywhere? In any experiment, any physical system, have you seen an orbit something like this? Okay. Now, 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 go to another level of abstraction. If you have this kind of orbit, what would its uh, uh, picture look like in the state space? Uh, it would be something like this, right? No. That means, it has to have a loop here. Now, the, what the hell is happening here? Is this possible? 
it is not possible in a 2D system because if the system is two dimensional then this must be intersection and an orbit cannot intersect itself because the moment it intersects that becomes the initial condition and then it will be the same periodic orbit. So, you cannot have this fellow going this way and this fellow going that way from the same point. Okay. Then obviously, where does the vector field point to? It must be a unique vector field, unique point, unique vector, unit arrow. Obviously, this is not possible in a 2D system. Hmm. So, see simple geometry tells you that such an orbit, such a, such a behavior on the oscilloscope cannot be seen if the system that you are studying is two dimensional. Clear? Did I solve any equations for that to prove that? No, not necessary. Simple geometric intuition tells you that, that in order to have an orbit like this, you of course, need to have a third dimension. So, that this orbit as it is seen on this particular uh, uh, diagram is a projection. It is not the actual diagram, it is a projection. There has to be a third dimension x, y and z. Think it in the opposite way. Suppose the state space behavior is like this. Okay, his question is, how do I get this from here? Think in the opposite way. If the state space behavior is like this, what would the time domain behavior be like? Try to work it out. So I am starting with a orbit something like this, and asking you what would be the time domain behavior like? <coughs> How will you do that? You start from a point, any point hmm, and you will trace its progress. Hmm. Of course, when you are plotting it against time, you are either plotting x or y. Right? Suppose you are plotting y. You start from a point which is the positive y, okay. I can see that afterwards the y is reducing, huh? so y will be reducing. It goes to the negative value, it goes to the negative value, all the while time goes, goes up. Then again it takes a positive value which means, but it does not go as high as this, stops here. Again turns down, goes to a negative value, a larger negative value and again can comes back to this value and that repeats. Okay. Do another exercise. Now, plot x versus t. Plot x versus t. In the same way, same logic, follow the same logic plot x versus t. <coughs> you have done so? Do you notice that the character of the of the waveform in the y versus t is that it comes back to the same value after two cycles, right? It comes back to the same value after two cycles. That is seen in the y axis and in the x axis also that is true. Okay. It cannot be so that in the y axis it is coming back to the same value after two cycles and x, x axis just one. No, it is not possible then. So, whichever direction you, you, may, you may look at it, it comes back to the same position after two cycles. That is why this is called a period two orbit. It is called a period two orbit. clear. 
it may so happen that you had a period 1 orbit as I said that you may have the birth of a periodic orbit as you change the parameter. In this example as you change the parameter through mu is equal to 0 the periodic orbit was born earlier it was not there hmm? it was born. As you change the parameter further a periodic orbit may become a period 2 orbit hmm? and so long as the system is 3D there is nothing to stop it. You cannot really prove a theorem to say that no this cannot happen. You can prove a theorem to say that this cannot happen if the system is 2D. If the system has just one capacitor another inductor this cannot happen. Try go to your lab connect a capacitor inductor and some kind of a voltage source and see cannot happen. Hmm. Probably you have seen this kind of a waveform in, in the saturation of transformers remember that electrical people have done that huh? immediate conclusion is that that must be at least 3D system. Hmm? Can you have an orbit something like this if that can happen this can also happen. You can really argue that no, 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 sir. I, 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 I don't agree. This will ha not happen. Yeah, it has to be three D. It has to be three D. Otherwise, it will stop in the first step itself. But if it is three D, then this can happen. Can this happen? There's nothing to stop it really. You cannot say that this will not happen all this can happen then. So, you see these are all limit cycles remember these are all limit cycles. So, you have you can have a periodic limit cycle you can have a period 2 limit cycle you can have a period 3 limit cycle you can have a period 4 limit cycle period 27 limit cycle period 138 limit cycle nothing will stop it okay. and in fact all of them do occur it is not that I am telling anything from my imagination all of them do occur period infinity orbit I mean if 1 is possible 2 is possible 3 is possible the way you have learned numbers uh, you have learned 1 2 3 4 128 348 and then 1 million 2 million 3 million and then ultimately extending the idea you say that if I can can go to all those extents then there is no reason why I cannot imagine an infinity here also you can say that if I can go all these extents then why not a in period infinity orbit what is mean meaning of period infinity orbit that it never comes back to itself a periodic orbit. So, a periodic orbit is essentially period infinity orbit that is also possible okay. that is also very much possible. So, you see the moment you start working along the the studying the nonlinearity, a whole you know possibility whole lot of possibility opens up. Earlier you had only a few types of behavior in a linear system you can either have a, a sink kind of behavior, source kind of behavior, saddle kind of behavior or spiral kind of behavior nothing more nothing more really. So, linear system theory is so simple because of this that nothing more can happen. But the moment you take nonlinearity into account, all these are possible. And in fact, bounded aperiodic orbits go by a special name that is called a chaotic orbit. So, chaos is nothing but aperiodic orbit, period infinity, but bounded. Remember, an unstable orbit is also aperiodic. Unstable orbit means something that collapses, it did not come back to itself. So, it is also a periodic orbit I am not talking about that a system that is stable stable in the sense that it does not collapse yet its behavior is a, a, a periodic. You might ask for examples right of course without examples what is the fun in life there has to be examples I will give you examples to work out but by the way. Uh, I asked you in the last class to get accustomed to some of the computation softwares hmm, 
which one are you most used to? Unanimous? You don't write your own code? <laughs> no, nobody writes their own code. My goodness, we started with Fortran, and then now everybody is writing in MATLAB. When we started computation, we had punch cards. So, so you remember, you, you had we had punch cards, and now you can simply write one code, one line, <coughs> ODE45, it so solves the, solve the equation. Eh? How time flies. Have you ever seen the punch cards? Have <laughs> huh? you ever seen the punch cards? We had, when we were undergraduate students, we had a machine, punching machine. And in that, we had those positions. Huh? We had to remember, A means 1, 2, 7, 1, 2, 7, crack. It, 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 it meant A. Then, then 3, 8, 9, crack, another, another. That way, we, we, we would uh, make the cards and finally, make a, a thick collection of cards, give to the computer, it will run and then say, after some time, after say 8, 9 hours, I will have to come and collect it and then it will say, in the 39th line, there was a comma missing. So, <laughs> so, so our competition was like that and now, nowadays, you simply see a comma missing there and you can type it. Anyway, that gives you, gives you much scope. Whatever we could not think of doing in one day, you can think of doing in one day. And so, you will have to do it one day. One day. <laughs> and what I will ask you to do in one day is, by the way, next time we are sitting on Monday, therefore, we have some time. Hmm. You solve uh, one set of equations and see, see its result. Hmm. Uh, Take down the, the, the set of equations and then I will uh, go ahead. Uh, as you can see, x, y and z are the state variables, 3D system, so everything can happen. I can easily see three parameters, sigma, r and b. Huh? Normally, we take two parameters are constant and study the effect of variation of one parameter, hmm? then it's the, the things are easier. So, take these parameters. Take R as a variable parameter. Fine. And calculate it for say a few values of R. R is equal to say 10, 20, 25, 30, and so on and so forth. Hmm. See, see the result. That will be your assignment to be done before you come to the next class. By the way, this system, what is the equilibrium point? Zero, 0 is the equilibrium point. What is the behavior at that equilibrium point? You can do that, right? You can obtain the, the Jacobian, you can find out the behavior, find it. Now, yes. Now, yes, because here you do not have a computer, I am not asking you to compute, but now you have a pen and your head. Whatever can be done with your pen and the head, do it. It is a 3D system. So, it will be a 3 by 3 matrix. Hmm? Zero, 0, 0 is 
a equilibrium point but that is not the only equilibrium point in this case do you notice that there must be more number of equilibrium points can you find them Okay, let me tell, tell you the process that you have to follow, hmm. because we will we'll study this system for some time in the next class and later. You will pro proceed in the same way. You will take this, put the left hand side is equal to 0, solve the right hand side. You will get, I can see that it is, it is, it is uh, this will give you a relationship between x and y. Here there is a uh, x z term, here there is a x y term, they put together they will give 3 equilibrium points, I can see that. Okay. All the 3 equilibrium points you will then need to li locally linearize, that means you will have to obtain the Jacobian matrix and put the <coughs> positions. After that you have to obtain the behavior at the individual equilibrium points. Now, do you know how to do that in a 3D system? Suppose this much idea will be necessary to, to, to solve this problem. Suppose you have got a equation something like x dot y dot z dot is equal to a 3 by 3 square matrix x, y, z. How do you solve it? Again, in the same way, obtain the eigenvalues or eigenvectors. Okay. What are the different poss possibilities? You can either have all the eigenvalues real, 3 eigenvalues real, all can be negative, in which case it will still be a sink, all can be positive, in which case it will be a source, one can be positive, two negative, in which case it will be a saddle, but remember in that case suppose this is uh, uh, one eigen direction, this is another eigen direction and this is another eigen direction and in these two eigen direction it is <coughs> negative and in this eigen direction it is positive. Then I can easily say that there will be a plane comprising these two eigen, eigen directions, a plane in which it is stable and in that direction it is unstable. So, that becomes the, the stable, that, that becomes the unstable eigen direction and this becomes the, un, the stable manifold. I said subspace in which it is stable or unstable. So, this plane becomes then the stable manifold and that becomes the unstable manifold. What if the eigenvalues are complex conjugate? Two can be complex conjugate and other fellow cannot be complex. The fellow must be stable, must be real. If it is real, then there are immediately a few possibilities. Can you can you can you draw? For example, associated with the complex conjugate eigenvalue, then I can associate a plane. Suppose it is this plane. And the this is the other other one associated with the real. In this plane, this behavior could be either incoming spiral or outgoing spiral depending on the, the, the real part. Supposing it is incoming spiral and this fellow is positive, what will be the behavior like? It will start from here and then it will go like this, right? It will be incoming spiral here along this direction, outgoing in that direction, it will be behavior like this. Similarly, you can imagine it opposite, if the, if the arrow is that way, which means the, the real eigenvalue is negative 
and this fellow has a positive real eigen part then what will happen it will go on increasing and expand it along this plane it will asymptotically converge on this onto this plane these ideas <coughs> before coming to the next class you try to figure out what are the different possibilities of such qualitative behavior in this 3d and on the basis we will continue clear without understanding that it will be difficult okay that's all about it today